Stop buying rental properties where you live. Find something a thousand miles away is so much easier. You don't have to drive around and see dozens of properties that you're never going to make an offer on. You don't have to hang out with a bunch of crusty realtors wearing baggy dockers with an elastic waistband and no belt. And the best part? You won't have the option to meet tenants, chase rent checks, mow lawns, or fix leaks. You'll be forced to find a better way to run your business like a business. Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. My name is Alex. That's Kirby over there. Now, Kirby would have way more experience with this, but I could give a couple cents on this, my two cents. But uh, you go first. You go first. What do you got? Yeah. Well, the thing is, is what, what are your misgivings and things like that? And I'm saying that because for people that don't know, Alex, he has a rental close to where he lives at. And what, <laughs> he, what, is, what are your misgivings about... <laughs> <laughs> what are your misgivings about moving out of your, you know, local landscape? Um, oh, for me, for me, uh, I mean, I have I have no problem with expanding. I just think right now it's like a it's like a learning process. I think being so close was like easier, but he's absolutely right. What he said at the end, it forces you to run your business like a business, and um. This is important because it, that that statement reminds me of like uh, Robert Kiyosaki, how he says, if you invest everything before your bills, it forces you to be smarter and work harder to pay your bills, you know, so right. it's kind of like that same concept. Um, that's what I thought of at least. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't I didn't like talk to any crusty realtors. <laughs> but <laughs> But I mean, I know you're just throwing it in there for a joke, but, um, but yeah, I mean, expanding, it's necessary if like in this situation where, you know, maybe the market of the state that you live in is, um, getting diff more and more difficult to find deals and you have to outsource, you just, that's just something you're going to have to do. Uh, you know, companies have to innovate as time progresses. They can't be, uh, still working on the same uh, ideas that they had 10 15 20 years ago so as an investor you have to move forward as well and look around the corner and think for the future right and and like you my I mean, we we took it two separate ways when you said run your business like a business if i own a business in which i own businesses i'm not physically doing work in the business so if when it forces you to run a business like a business, what it's saying is you're putting the right people in place. You're setting up the right terms. Like so, let's just use a let's just say uh, apartment A B C out there somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee or something like that. If you're not there to do the maintenance, to sit there and harass the tenants or whatever, it forces you to put the people in place, put the right property management in place, put the right vendors in place, put the right uh, contractors in place to do the things that you need to be done. Until you can step away from the business and you can manage the business instead of you working in the business, is it really a business or is it, or is it really you own a job? That's how I look at it. And me, you know, me, I'm local and then I'm, you know, I'm way over there in BFE. I'm, I, I don't care where it's at. As long as it's a deal, it's a deal. But what it does is it makes me be more harsh on the numbers. Uh, it makes me focus more on, hey, all right, now I have this set up. Do I have the right people in place? And focusing on the people in place. When you own a business, it's about managing different sections of the business. If you're, uh, I think somebody... A guy told me when I was in the army, when I, you know, when I first, you know, made E5 buck sergeant, and then I was sitting out there working, you know, with the soldiers, working to, you know, get the job done. And then he pulled me to the side. It was a staff sergeant, sergeant first class. I can't remember. But they pulled me to the side and they said, how can you manage? How can you manage and see the big picture if you're down there with the workers? That's the same thing when it comes to business. If you out there, no matter what the business is, if you're doing the grunt work, how can you see the big picture to expand if you're focused on the little menial tasks? It's up to you as a business owner, a manager of people to put the right people in place to make that section of the business optimal. And so long as you're sitting there 
doing all the work, you know, doing all the repairs and, you know, saying hello to the tenant, shaking their hand and, you know, the tenant's calling you and, you know, you know, the stories about me running over there for tenants when uh, I ain't no better. But when you're going to do that, you're really not focused on the big picture. And really, when in that scenario, when I was running over there to help the tenant, I wasn't focused on the big picture. I was just looking like, oh, I got to make sure my property is OK. I don't care about tenant. I just make sure my property was OK. But the real thing is, is the tenant is their own person. That's their own family. They need to deal with what they need to do. It don't make sense for you to go jump in front of a bullet for a tenant. You know, it yeah. ain't like the rent's going to kill you or nothing like that. And those are the things that moving out of state force you to do. And then like the deal that I just did, I, I had to focus on, okay, is it the right property management place? What do I need to instill in them to make them understand how the market is going? Uh, do they have the right contacts and stuff like that? The right contractors? the right builders, you know, repair people and stuff like that, making sure that the area was not, you know, in an area, because of course I'm unfamiliar with it because it's out of the state, but making sure that this, you know, area will hold up, you know, crime is not, you know, crime written and stuff like that. It makes you to think more and do more when you are investing out of the, out of your locale. And I'm not saying, Oh, just cause you know, anywhere you live at, you should always vote, uh, you should always invest away from where you're at. No, you should only invest away from where you're at when the financial numbers don't make sense of your location. That's it. So if you're living in SoCal or you're living in um, what's uh, Silicon Valley, if you're living in Austin, Texas, if you're living in uh, if you're living in places like Manhattan. Tampa or Lakeland, you know, stuff like that. You don't want to be, you don't want to be investing in, in those areas because the cash flow doesn't make sense. It's okay to go out your realm. If I'm not saying you have to go out of the state, but you should, you should be looking away from where you're at and lower costs to live or stuff like that to find deals because the area you live in, everybody's paying breakneck prices. So why would you keep going to pay breakneck prices to hopefully break even with the rental? Alex, what you got? Man, that was well said. I, I don't have much. <laughs> I mean, it's very true. Uh, I mean, I'm just learning off of like your behalf, seeing what you're doing, uh, making notes, having ideas for uh, my future. But um, it, it makes sense. I mean, it's absolutely true. If you want to run it like a business or you as an investor, uh, you the, the idea, especially the name of our channel, passive money it's passively managed uh you know it's not actively managed by you working on it um and as we as we've talked about that determines whether you're mom and pop or you're actually an actual business you know if are you the one that's making the doing the repairs managing the tenants or um do you have management in place for that and the operation running itself so yeah right and I mean, it's some people that have the, the functionality and stuff and built the business around management. You know, they own the rentals, then they built the management company. That's fine. If they don't want to pay the 10%, 8%, whatever they pay into property management, that's fine. But for the majority of people, they're trying to circumvent not paying the property manager so they can go do the work. But if they're doing the work, I will, you know, reference what I said earlier. If you're down there with the grunt, how can you look at the big picture? And that's and that's how I look at it. I mean, is there some, you know, properties that I have? I have, you know, a couple of properties that's local to me that if it's something minor and I can go, you know, I'll go fix it. Just, you know, save me a couple of dollars here or there. But for the most part, I'm um I'm calling I'm calling the big guys to come get it done because I've structured the I structured the rental and the property to when I bought it that the cash flow that I'm receiving is exponentially higher than the cost to run the place. That if I call somebody, they can deal with the, you know, meandering task of getting stuff fixed so I can focus on the big picture of growing my portfolio, growing the business and things like that, building relationships instead of me putting on a tool belt, grabbing a wrench and thinking I'm about to go down there and spend hours, uh, 
just trust me. If you see me in your property, you're in trouble. That's all I'm saying. You're in trouble. If I'm in it, if I'm there, that's all I'm saying. Uh, with all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, and we will see you guys in the next video.